Whenever I tell people I'm in a nursing program, I get a variety of responses. Some are the typical, wow, that's amazing, I could never do that. And then there are answers that are a little more probing and almost confrontational. Ultimately, someone asks something like, why not be a doctor instead? Which is probably informed by the fact that I'm a guy, but also because I think people have a misunderstanding of what nursing actually entails. They're not mini doctors. And for a long time, I myself struggled with how to answer this question. What I wish I could do in those times is whisk whoever I was speaking to away, sit them down in front of a screen, and have them watch Violet Evergarden Gaiden. Throughout the movie, Violet embodies what it means to be a nurse. She is patient and understanding, but also vulnerable and firm. As a nurse, you are the patient advocate, there to represent their best interests and well-being and Violet fits this definition to a T. In a sense, I think Violet's military background perfectly squares with the adeptness she shows in nurturing. You see, I think you can think of a hospital, or medicine in general really, as being a well-oiled machine much like the military. Doctors are kind of like generals, who see the bigger picture in order, sometimes literal, surgical strikes. There are a number of support services, like pharmacists, that make sure supplies are headed to where they're needed. But if medicine is a war on sickness, nurses are on the front lines. They are the first and last point of contact, and, well, everything in between. To be a nurse is to be deep in the trenches, using specialized knowledge in a fast-paced environment, helping someone directly in front of you that you can touch with your hands. By the time we see Violet in Gaiden, she has suffered through her own troubles and come out on top of them. She still harbors some pain, of course, and may do so indefinitely. But she has already passed one hurdle of being a great nurse, and that is taking care of yourself. You cannot enter a profession of caring for others while also neglecting your own physical and mental health, and it is one reason why nurses experience such high rates of burnout. Much of Violet Evergarden, the series, is Violet overcoming her own troubles and realizing her capability to help others in the process. This new Violet is well equipped to face her daily responsibilities and has developed the ever so crucial skill of empathy. But in Gaiden, she faces a new challenge. In the past, a request to mentor a prospective debutante would have been an impossibility for young Violet, but in a manner we are now well accustomed to, Violet graciously accepts, to the bewilderment of her fellow memory dolls. She embarks on her journey to an all-girls academy to meet Isabella York. However, Violet is not greeted with the warmest of reception. Her initial introduction is met coldly, and Isabella straight up tells her, I don't want to be friends, you seem like a snob. Violet's reaction is the next indicator of good nursing, in that it is no reaction at all. She doesn't take it personally. Nurses know that they are entering into a tumultuous time in a patient's life. Someone sick and in distress is not always going to take well to you showing up. Having the cognizance to understand this, and to take care of them anyway, is a unique strength nurses have to cultivate. Not everyone has the patience for patients. I guess they're called that for a reason. Violet is not one to be hurt so easily, so she takes Isabella's comments in stride. Instead, what she does is constantly watch over her, almost like her guardian angel. She notices when she is uncomfortable and swoops in to save her from awkward situations. Her constant presence lets Isabella know that she is not alone, but she gives distance like letting a distrustful cat come to you instead. This is another sign of good nursing, being physically there for your patient. In my mind, that's the number one distinction between being a nurse versus a doctor. A surgeon might come in for a second to explain the procedure and get the form signed, or an internist may poke and prod a bit before moving on. A nurse is with you the entire day or night, from seven to seven. A good nurse is more reliable than clockwork, a constant presence that assures you that you are not forgotten. An immediate attention is only a press of the call bell away. In the age of machines, this is more important than ever. A machine can tell you what a patient's heart rate is, or their oxygen saturation percentage. It can't tell you how scared they are, if they need a hand to hold, or how much they miss their family. Someone's emotional well-being is what you're caring for just as much as their physical state, but even then, you can't watch for changes from baseline or incremental progress if you don't actually watch your patient. 
Violet initially gives Isabella some space, meeting her where she's at. But over time, the two grow closer. Eventually, Violet never leaves her side, whether that be taking a bath together or sleeping in the same bed. As Isabella opens up and begins to share her past, Violet generously listens with no agenda, no judgment. Violet even returns the favor with her own fleeting moments of vulnerability. And vulnerability, really, is at the heart of patient care. You've probably heard that the nursing profession is consistently rated as the most trusted, 19 years in a row in fact. What I think explains this is the core role of vulnerability. Researcher Brene Brown believes it to be a fundamental necessity for human connection, and it's the subject of her wildly popular TED Talk. She found that those who were the most wholehearted, those who displayed the most courage and human connection, were also those most willing to be vulnerable. And where are we more forced to be vulnerable than laying in a hospital bed? Naked, under a thin hospital gown, through illness exposed for the world to see. In that sense, nurses have a great responsibility, and hopefully that most trusted designation indicates that that responsibility has been thus far upheld. In the movie, Isabella talks about how she feels trapped, and dancing is used as a metaphor for freedom. As the movie runs, Violet slowly teaches her the waltz, being careful to only add new steps after she's comfortable with the previous ones. This eventually culminates into a tremendous scene, where Isabella looks up to a painting of a bird and smiles, as if she now feels that she can fly herself. At the end of their three months together, Isabella's feelings towards Violet are almost completely the opposite from when they first met. She initially saw her as this perfect ideal she could never live up to, someone who hadn't known the struggles that she had to face. But through Violet's guidance and their shared vulnerability, Isabella learns that this is not the case. Now, she sees Violet as someone who guided her to where she is now. She tells her, I'm so mean, and yet you're so nice to me. To which Violet responds, I'm just doing what I've learned. Right before they leave one another, Isabella tells Violet that she will find some way to repay her for what she's done. And Violet, after taking a moment to think, simply says, I don't really know why, but I don't want you to. I think I know why. I think because caring for someone shouldn't feel transactional, or that receiving a reward for doing so would cheapen the experience. Watching someone blossom, and knowing that you were right there to water them and point them towards the sun, is reward enough. At least, that's what being a nurse is to me. Thanks for watching! I am indeed alive. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for their kind comments, as well as those who reached out to see how I was doing. I had explained it to the patrons, but to make a long story short, the pandemic ended up forcing me to work, and as a result, I had a lot less time to devote to the channel. I'm still working, but school is currently on break for the summer. Speaking of school, I graduate this December. <laughs> uh, I'm nervous, but excited to join the throngs of those on whom we relied upon so much throughout our shared ordeal. If you like this video, please click the like button. It's the easiest way to support the channel and tells YouTube that this is a video worth watching. Subscribe to the channel to get updates on when I upload, and if you want to support me even further, you can donate to my Patreon. Special thanks to Jawthirst, The Scourge of Potters, Mr. Hers Fellow Der Sovereign, Your Lollymore, Anime Sucks, Ben Saint, Gamer Quake, and Instant Runoff Voting Om for their support. And of course, if anything I said was wrong, I'm sorry. I must have stuttered.